people know that you're a Christian. And if they know you're a Christian, what type of Christian do they know you for? I think that we're going to find that being very important because God wants his people known a certain way. And as we continue our study in the book of Deuteronomy, we see uh, a verification of that for the people of Israel that extends to you and I today as believers in Christ, that he wants his people identified in this way. And we're going to check that out as we look at these various laws in chapter 23 of Deuteronomy. Hi, I'm Pastor Jeremy Bannister of Heights Christian Church, and we're going through the Bible in five years period of time. If it's always been a goal of yours to go through the Word of God, we invite you on this journey with us by subscribing to our channel, clicking the bell for notifications. You can uh, receive a devotional much like this one. We'll read just a little bit of the Scripture together and pull one thing from it to help us be more like Jesus. Well, like I said, we have in our study today, as we look at uh, different laws that are laid out for the people of Israel, one in particular really stands out to me about how the people of Israel, the character of the people, ought to be. And it should be something that we as Christians adopt as well. Let's check it out. No one whose testicles are crushed or whose male organ is cut off shall enter the assembly of the Lord. No one born of a forbidden union may enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. None of his descendants may enter into the assembly of the Lord. No Ammonite or Moabite may enter the assembly of the Lord, even to the tenth generation. None of them may enter the assembly of the Lord forever, because they did not meet you with bread and with water on the way when you came out of Egypt, and because they hired against you Balaam, the son of Beor, the, uh, from uh, Pethor of Mesopotamia, to curse you. But the Lord your God would not listen to Balaam. Instead, the Lord your God turned the curse into a blessing for you because the Lord your God loved you. You shall not seek their peace or their prosperity all your days forever. You shall not abhor an Edomite, for he is your brother. You shall not abhor an Egyptian because you were a sojourner in his land. Children born to them in the third generation may enter the assembly of the Lord. When you are encamped against your enemies, then you shall keep yourself from every evil thing. If any man among you becomes unclean because of a nocturnal emission, then he shall go outside the camp. He shall not come inside the camp. But when evening comes, he shall bathe himself in water, and as the sun sets, he may come inside the camp. You shall have a place outside the camp, and you shall go out to it, and you shall have a, a drowl with your tools. And when you sit down outside, you shall dig a hole with it and turn back and cover up your excrement, because the Lord your God walks in the midst of your camp to deliver you and to give up your enemies before you. Therefore, your camp must be holy, so that he may not see anything indecent among you and turn away from you. You shall not give up to, you shall not give up to his master a slave who has escaped from his master to you. He shall dwell with you in your midst in the place that he shall choose within one of your towns. Wherever it suits him, you shall not wrong him. None of the daughters of Israel shall be a cult prostitute, and none of the sons of Israel shall be a cult prostitute. You shall not bring the fee of a prostitute or the wages of a dog into the house of the Lord your God in payment for any vow, for both of these are an abomination to the Lord your God. You shall not charge interest on the loans to your brother, interest on money, interest on food, interest on anything that is lent for interest. You may charge a foreigner interest, but you may not charge your brother interest, that the Lord your God may bless you in all that you undertake in the land that you are entering to take possession of it. If you make a vow to the Lord your God, you shall not delay fulfilling it, for the Lord your God will surely require it of you, and you will be guilty of sin. But if you refrain from vowing, you will not be guilty of sin. You shall be careful to do what has passed your lips, for you have voluntarily vowed to the Lord your God what you have promised with your mouth. If you go into your neighbor's vineyard, you may eat your fill of grapes, as many as you wish, but you shall not put any in, in your bag. If you go into your neighbor's standing grain, you may pluck the ears with your hand, but you shall not put a sickle to your neighbor's standing grain. 
And so we see a lot of various laws that are here. Some of these have to do with uh, ritual purification for the people so they can worship God rightly. That have to do with the purification of the camp so that they treat the camp and regard the camp as holy. And then we see uh, various laws talking about how they're supposed to deal with their brothers and their sisters, different from the foreigners. In other words, God God gives preference to the people within uh, those who are called his people as opposed to those who are outside his people. We should do the same as believers in Christ. Those inside the church should be regarded in, in a higher way than those outside the church. Not that they're less popular or less less uh, made in the image of God. But those who are inside the church are your brothers and sisters in Christ. And we can see so many places in the New Testament where we are called to give preferential treatment, that first treatment to our brothers and sisters in Christ before we're helping those on the outside. But beyond all of that, there is this command that if the people are to make a vow to the Lord, that they say they're going to do something, then they need to fulfill it. And they need to be known as people of their word. And so it's important for people to watch their mouth to make sure that they don't vow something that they can't, you know, that they can't um, uh, do, you know, don't, don't write checks that you, that you can't fulfill, right? Um, but at the same time, you and I as believers in Christ are also supposed to be known as people of our word. As a matter of fact, Jesus mentions this very thing in Matthew chapter 5 when he says this. He says again, you have heard that it was said of old, of those of old, you shall not swear falsely, but shall perform to the Lord what you have sworn. But I say to you, do not take an oath at all, either by heaven, for it's the throne of God, uh, or by earth, for it is footstool, or by Jerusalem, for it is the city of the great king. And do not take an oath by your head, for you cannot make one hair white or black. Let what you say be simply yes or no. Anything more than this comes from evil, or in some translations, comes from the evil one. Why this is important is because what we see is an upping of the ante, right? In Deuteronomy, what we see is if you make a vow to the Lord, make sure you fulfill it right? Jesus says, don't make a vow to the Lord. Don't make a vow to the Lord. Don't swear by heaven or by the throne of God or by earth or by Jerusalem because it's the city of the great king. And don't take an oath by your own head. I swear by myself. You know, I swear by my, my great grandmother. You know, whatever it means so much to you that would make somebody else think that this is a real promise. You know, my um, growing up, we, we uh, had this reassurance, my dad would say, well, this is a, a daddy promise. And I know he didn't mean it in this way. What he was trying to convey to us was this was an oath. If I say this, then it means that this is really going to happen. Uh, it was a vow, basically, that he was making. And Jesus ups the ante for us as believers in Christ, that our yes should be yes, and we don't need to be able to qualify it with anything else. I, I swear by God that this is going to happen. You know, I, I swear by my son's life. I swear by, I mean, we can make up all these things that we would swear by to make somebody say, this I really mean. But as a Christian, as somebody who's known as a believer in Christ, you're in our, you're in my yes ought to mean something to people. You're in my no ought to mean something to people. It's something that, that when we say something, we really mean it. We're going to follow through with it. And we're known as people of our word. See, that's what God wants, is the integrity of his people, known by his name, to fulfill what they say, and they don't need a special vow for it. So my prayer is that you and I would live our lives that way. When people look at us and they see us as a Christian, they not only see us as a Christian, but somebody who means what they say, that if we give them a promise, they, we tell them we're going to do something, our yes means yes, our no means no, and it's so sure that they can count on it because they can count on the type of character we have because we serve Jesus. God bless you. I hope that helps you this day, and we will talk with you again tomorrow.